might even publish this like on on YouTube if you're if you're okay with it. Usually yeah. I'll be like, oh, we had a really good conversation, and I send it to my team and go, hey, can you take some yeah. notes on this? But like yeah. th- this one, I think actually people would probably want to tune into and just watch True. straight through. And that's that's really smart because that's like you're figuring out the acquisition channel before you actually build the product, which like yeah, way yeah. too many people mess up and like don't uh, don't do. So that, that's really really smart. I swear, I'm actually a paranoid about failure. So is my co-founder. We have like built mm. so many products previously, and all of the all of them failed because nobody wanted it or nobody could yeah. find out about it. So yeah. our goal in life is, you know what? Even if you don't end up building the product, we should first get the customers. And, yeah, exactly. And then sell them something. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. So, exactly. yeah, this was, yeah. And so we've been following that. So when we started Delight Chat, uh, we hired an engineer and a marketer at the same time. And all mm. of these VC friends of mine, uh, like from the Indian startup scene, they're like, why are you hiring marketing? And I'm yeah. like, dude, why will... First of all, why will a company fail? Because nobody buys their product. So then why shouldn't yeah. I hire marketing? Marketer, yeah, outside? exactly. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's so many people. If you, especially if you hang out and like, I mean, I've seen that, you know, my, my, my dad is Indian and like, you know, he he's failed with quite a few startups and with all of them, it's like, it's like, oh, like once, once the product's done, we'll just, we'll hire a junior marketer like anyone anyone can market it's It'll a just great work product out. and i'm just like that is that is not the way that any of this works like how did you not yeah. learn from like the first like couple times but then you also right. see it with indie hackers is just they spend so much time on the product and i'm just like look like if you have yeah. 10 people that are paying for your product you'd be you'd be so much better served by going out and finding another 90 people that are just right. like them and not building more features like <laughs> no one cares that you're building more features if they yeah. don't know that you're doing that you know so, I, I share yeah. that frustration so the one of the the first engineer akash who joined our team he was fully into the indie hacker maker scene and then he started yeah. working with us and he's like dude what the fuck they just keep building and not talking to customers so he was telling his friends that, hey, I found out that there's this thing called talking to customers before building. And they're like, wait, let me <laughs> launch the next feature first. And he's like, yeah. but nobody wants it. Like, what's the point? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. It's, it's hard. Like, I think that's why I keep overcompensating and writing about this marketing thing again and again. Mm. So that some more people try to do marketing before building next the next feature. Yeah, yeah let's yeah. see. <laughs> let's see what happens. Yeah. 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 But I, yeah, I'm not we, sure, um, like, yeah. yeah, yeah, go on. You're good. Yeah, it's just basically, I think it's a symptom of the, the ability to build uh, blindsides you from the part. I don't think engineers are able to visualize that getting customers is equivalent to the same work as building a product mm-hmm. feature. They think yeah, it's like yeah. a thing that you just do on the side or something, but yeah. they don't want to, or maybe it's just comfortable to write more code because you don't need to rely on anyone uh, you don't have yeah. to fear failure like it, my feature will work something like that maybe something yeah with psychology. yeah like, there's, you there's, there's a couple yeah there's a couple different things there because it's it's like it's them playing to their strengths and staying within like their comfort zones and stuff but then the other wow. thing that i think a lot of people discount is that there's a lot of uncertainty in marketing and there's not much uncertainty in product of like, they know that if they write good code and if they test it, then the code will work. And so I I tweeted about that the other day of just like, you know, marketing is just, it's like gambling when the odds are in your favor, that even though they're in your favor, (laughs) there's no guarantee that anything that you do for marketing will ever work. You can put a hundred hours into the best campaign that you've ever created and there's right. a chance that just no one will care. And then sometimes yeah. you do things where it's like, you know, you take 10 minutes to write a tweet. It goes and it viral. Goes viral. And it's, it's very yeah. annoying. <laughs> My highest like tweets are like that. I spent like 60 yeah. seconds writing it. And the moment I hit tweet, I'm like, this is going to do better than that painstakingly long tweet thread I wrote from an original article. It's, that, it's just yeah. very annoying, but it happens. Yeah. But exactly. I think the uncertainty exactly. that nailed it, like they want to feel yeah. in control. And the uncertainty is definitely scary. Like I might do a lot of effort and nothing might come out of it. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 I'm, I'm lucky there. Cause I, um, I started then made with, with my friend Arun and he was the, um, he was the technical on um, the technical co-founder. So we did very similar. We didn't build up the audience first, but he started building the product and spent six months building the product while I was out actively like cold emailing and cold calling um, 
cold calling like our uh, our potential customers and stuff and kind of building like building that up so i had like a list of folks that were ready when we actually took the software live this is back in like 2013 right so like at the time there was like one little community online that i was a part of that was kind of building businesses this way and then outside of that it was very much like unheard of or whatever but uh, another big thing that i've like that i've talked about a bit is that i also used to play a lot of poker and so Mm. because like I'm used to playing poker and I, I didn't realize this until like last year or the year before, yeah. but the whole thing of like expected value of it's like, yeah. you know, you know that if you talk to a hundred people, you can get maybe five or 10 of them, or maybe even 20 if you're really good to actually right. like sign up, yeah. but you don't know which 20 they're going to be until you talk to all 100. And so like, I was very, yeah, very much used to that kind of like expected value and just, yeah, like, yeah, like failure is a part of life. Like, of course we're going to yeah. get rejected like eight times out of 10. Like, what are you expecting? And, you know, for him, it took a, it took a lot of like, you know, he, he, he thought something was wrong every time someone looked at the software and didn't want to yeah. buy it. And I was just like, yeah. what are you talking about? Like, you know, like that's, they have their own solution. They don't need us. Like whatever, you know, like completely true. Them. Yeah. The internalizing, I guess, poker held that every time you roll the die or you turn a card, you're not going to win, but sometimes you will. And that's why you're, you're playing, you're rolling the die every time for that sometime. Yeah. And yeah, if, yeah. if you've internalized that, then you know that if you're going to uh, get rejected eight out of 10 times, that means you're going to win two out of 10. So I need to do hundred of these or, yeah, you know, exactly. a thousand in a year to get 200 exactly. customers, something like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. And the other thing is like the payoff, right? Cause a lot of people look at it as straight odds of like, Oh, like in order for it to work, like, you know, we've got to like close every person or we've got to close like six out of 10. It's like, well, no, like, if you close two out of 10, but, but each one of those person is worth like a hundred X the effort or whatever, right. you know, then, you know, it balances out or, or whatever. And so, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, I'm always trying to like hammer that hammer that home as well. <laughs> that when, when I was in, uh, in, in Bali, like three weeks ago or whatever, they, um, there, there's like a, a really solid indie hacker scene there. And so yeah. they do like weekly meetups and stuff. And so I'd go like half the time and, and always just be like, yeah, anyone wants to talk about marketing, like I'm here to, here to <laughs> chat with you guys, you know, like let's, let's, let's like actually get you guys doing something that's going to build the company or whatever, rather than right. just like pushing new features and stuff. So. <laughs> so would they buy that? Like, would they actually get into that conversation or would the conversations mostly revolve around product and features? Well, mo- mostly it revolved around product and features, but the whole the whole thing w- w- was was that like it resonated for quite a few of them, and so like most of the guys at some point, because I was there for a couple of months, most of the people that were there sat down and had a conversation with me about their marketing, which was which was good, you know. Um, but yeah. but yeah, most of them were like focusing, you know. But it was kind of a running joke because they'd always be like, oh, you know, I'm supposed to be marketing, but today I'm going to build this feature, right? And it's <laughs> like you know, hey, it's it's more it's more like people are now. Aware aware of it it seems like yeah. least those guys like they, they were very much more aware that they should be marketing yeah. even if they still weren't i'm like okay at least you know it at least at least you get yeah. it you know yeah yeah i think it's so it's come from the phase of uh, i guess things go through phases where you're not aware of it then it becomes common knowledge but it's not yet common practice and then at some point yeah. it becomes a part of your life so people yeah, are exactly. going through that phase right like exactly. I wasn't a big thing in like, I wasn't big into marketing until I understood how it worked. Cause for me, everything looked like, whoa, all of these brands doing marketing and how does it work? Like, since I hadn't done anything at any scale uh, or, you know, coordinated a whole marketing campaign from start to scratch, seen mm. months of effort pay off. Uh, and like last year I decided, okay, so for delight chat to work, I have to figure this out. So I have to yeah. become good at marketing. There's just no two ways yeah. around it. Otherwise it's not yeah, going to yeah. work out. So, but then from there, for the first few months, nothing made sense. Kept mm-hmm. trying, kept trying. And then suddenly it started making sense. The results started That's coming clicking. in. And now, yeah. now you're like, oh, this works. This doesn't work. This is what people want. So yeah. I, I was trying to explain to the rest of the team that what is marketing? You find out what people want and then give it to them. That's yeah. basically what it is. And like, they're like, oh, that's overly simplified. I'm like, it is, it is overly simplified, but if yeah. that's, that's all you have to do in different ways. So if people are yeah. hanging out on Twitter and they want to learn new things, then give them tweet yeah. threads about the things they want to learn. Yeah. And yeah. same thing on, if you go to Instagram, they want to be entertained. So give them double tap worthy pictures, like double tap like yeah. stuff. So yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. It yeah. started to yeah. make sense suddenly at some point, but it yeah. wasn't yeah. for a long time. 
Yeah. Yeah. The, the, the way, the way that I've found that I feel like really resonates with a lot of people and like it particularly resonates with, with developers because I think it allows them in some ways to play to their strengths, but then also to see why other things work. And like with the way that I've always described marketing is like marketing is anything that you do that essentially helps or entertains or adds value to your target audience without you asking for anything in return. And so that's right. what I was telling them. They're like, hey, like, that's why people do content marketing. But also if you do a free tool that people get yeah. a lot of value of and then want to share and want to talk about, and then the users of those free tools eventually come in and use your paid product, Absolutely. that's a form of marketing. So like you can do yeah. engineering as marketing, but you have to, like you can't just always be asking people for money. If the only time they find out about you is because you're asking them to pull out their credit card and give you money, you're not marketing. Yeah. You're just yeah. like, you're just selling and not affecting. You're a salesman, you know? yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's that's also true. It's another this, this is another thing that Sankalp and I picked up along the way. So we just at some point assume that, or rather, we are operating under the assumption that if we can find out what people need, where people need value, and we can just keep delivering delivering a lot of it, then mm -hmm. they're we are bound to be financially okay. Like yeah, it's it's almost impossible that you give so much value to people and then you don't make anything out of it. You just have to say yeah. that hey, you, you got this value, you want more of it. Here's the sign up page, and you yeah. don't even have to tell them to go to the sign up page. They'll see it if they really like what you or they really trust that you are actually delivering value. So that's what we focus on: are we giving value? And if we do, and we are not getting sign ups, then we are not delivering value. Because why else yeah. would people not sign up with us? Like, yeah, it doesn't yeah, make yeah. sense. Something like that. Yeah. It's it's uh I don't know if you've ever heard heard the quote I don't remember who who it's from but I I, I really like it of um of the the best way to get what you want in life is to give enough other people like what they want in life you know <laughs> and it's that's very yeah, true it's, yeah it's it's just you know that that's something that I that I preach very much to, like to our team because we've got like a pretty pretty yeah. sizable like sizable team now and it's it's right. just like everything that we do is about making made services more successful. If you make like everyone Absolutely. that comes to us, whether they're a customer or not, you make them successful and eventually they're going to come back around and end up paying it back to us, whether it's actually in money or whether it's referrals or whatever it is. But Absolutely. Like, you know, we, it's not always money. They might tell someone employees. about your tool, right? Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. The only thing there is just because uh, there's one thing that I think that you have down better than than like than than most um and it's just something to just you know not to take for granted because i think you're like you're good at it is just um is just that you have like a lot of the monetization down right because there are some people that add a ton of value but they can't find a way to actually monetize it but it, it's yeah. just like that combination like even if you have something where it's not very well monetized but it is monetized if you, yeah. if you add enough value you'll always be like be okay and be fine so true, true. Yeah. True. Yeah. You have to create value and then capture a tiny portion of it, and you exactly. have to make sure you capture it. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. It's like for us right now, I think it's through Stripe. I think it's through through Stripe. I think that our customers run tw was is it twenty million? I think it's like twenty million dollars of revenue that's generated wow. through Stripe, like via our system, like that's every month. Amazing. And like I look at that. Yeah, and I'm just like, God, we capture such a little portion of it, but that little portion is enough to pay everyone on the team, you know, right. and for like right. me to be living a good life and everything. I'm like, yeah, like we're we're getting rewarded. We're getting rewarded very nicely for the work that we do. So absolutely, um, yeah, yeah. So wow, so you're capturing basically five percent of the value created through your system because your uh, AR, ARR is one million, right? No, so 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 less less than that actually, because uh, because uh, it, it's twenty million that runs through each month, and oh, our okay. ARR is a million. So yeah, so point four percent divided by twelve. Yeah, point four percent, right? Uh, okay. But that 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 makes that makes a lot of sense. Like I feel like that sounds that sounds like like really low. But when you yeah. keep in mind that like most made services, if they're collecting twenty million, that means that probably. 16 million is pretty much going out Cost. the door immediately yeah mm. so it's probably closer closer to like 4 million that's like actually being brought in that like yeah. the, they have left over yeah. so like when you compare it like that then it sounds yeah. like a bit um a bit like better because i was thinking yeah. that as well as i'm like yeah 20 million dollars a month and we only make like you know like k <laughs> or whatever so yeah you know no i think i i don't think the percentage is low because if you think about how much value google search creates for instance every mm -hmm. month it's creating 
100 billion worth of value for businesses around the world who are using Google search to acquire customers. And then Google makes like, uh, what they make 50 or what 60 billion dollars a year in revenue from search yeah, or I I, so. actually yeah so that means they're making like five six billion that's around say five percent of the i'm not sure these numbers are correct yeah but yeah, they're yeah. probably so making somewhere in yeah single digit yeah. percentage too so yeah. i guess that's the yeah. part where you give disproportionate value as compared to how much you capture and yeah 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 uh, I've, I've been reading some uh some some interesting stuff about um uh about about twitter lately there was a really good article um the the other day that um, of all the social media platforms twitter has been by far the worst at actually capturing the value yeah. that they create right yeah, because yeah, like yeah. you think about it right they think about so much, much twitter yeah think about how much like yeah. value twitter has given like <laughs> you personally but then like right. who gets all the money when you sell your seo course it's gumroad right right i swear, right? I swear. It's on twitter <laughs> you know so i thought that i was really swear totally like review yeah, yeah. um, or rather let's say substack and clubhouse uh yeah. they're all built on top of twitter's graph and they are mm -hmm. like right now billion dollar companies and yeah. Twitter has captured nothing out of it. Now they're trying something, which I don't yeah. know if it'll work. Like, I don't think Clubhouse as a feature in Twitter is going to work. I think Twitter should launch Spaces as an independent product, but allow you to start mm -hmm. it, uh, initiate the conversation from within Twitter from so that Twitter, people yeah. don't need to be on Twitter to start using uh, Spaces. But yeah, they're not capturing that value. Like somebody just became a 10 million worth company and yeah. <laughs> via Twitter, completely via Twitter. Yeah, even yeah Substack. exactly. Yeah, that's that's nutty. That's nutty. So, uh, it is. yeah, yeah. But, but yeah, yeah, I mean, I, Twitter's been great. I don't know how long have you just been on Twitter in like the past like year when you started marketing, or were you on it a lot before then? So I signed up in 2011, and then I didn't yeah. use it for the longest time. And I think yeah, 2019, <laughs> yeah, it's just there. Like, uh, and I didn't. So I was anti-social media for a really long time because I I just hated it. I hated the whole thing. Uh, because everybody around me was just posting shit about, oh, look how amazing my life is. And then the moment the mm -hmm. camera goes down, I hate my life. And I hated the whole thing. So I refused <laughs> to participate, basically. And my, my basically, my rebellion was that I'm not going to even go be part of it. Uh, but yeah. then Twitter was the first place where I found that I don't have to be like that. I can just be authentic and valuable or ask people yeah. for value or give them value. And that's why people will, you know, like you or talk to you, not because you're saying, yeah. look at my shiny life, like, and then yeah. here's the moment the camera goes down like that. So I guess, yeah. So around 2019, yeah. I realized that. And I think the realization came from something else. Uh, it was somebody told me that if you, if you are good, but then nobody knows you're good, then you're, it, you don't exist. It's uh, mm -hmm. and the example I would say is there's a lot of scientists, but Neil deGrasse Tyson captures a lot of value on behalf of mm -hmm. all of those scientists because people know about him because he tweets yeah. funny stuff and he goes mm -hmm. on shows. So mm -hmm. like there must be many people who are as smart as him, but then only yeah. we only know about him. So then the yeah. question is, if you're good or if you get to a point where you're good enough to give value to others, it's about how many yeah. people know you now. And yeah, that exactly. propelled me that I have to do this. Otherwise, I'll just be like this isolated piece in the web, it not yeah. connected to the rest of the web and therefore not able to derive or give value. Yeah, 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 exactly, yeah. exactly. What brought yeah. you to Twitter finally, like to start using it actively? Yeah, so uh, honestly, it was, it was it's very like similar story to you. I signed up in 2009 um, and then never never really like used it when did twitter launch like 2007 or something like yeah. i I grew, I grew up in um in silicon valley so like my the high school that i went to was um you know like facebook started out only being for uh, colleges and for college um like email addresses or whatever it's like my high school was the very first high school that they allowed to, to get on to um to, to facebook and stuff so i've been on like a lot of that stuff for like for for, for a long time but yeah i, I started on it in, in 2009 and never really used it never really got into it and then um same thing as you that it was in late 2019 sometime around like october or november of 2019 i started getting more active on there and honestly for the life of me i cannot remember what actually got me like 
on there. I don't remember why I actually started, like started doing that. But then like when it really began to pick up was, uh, was, was March of last year. So when, when I went mm. into lockdown in Scotland, then I was just sitting at home and then so were, mm. so were a lot of other people. So I started tweeting like a lot more, like I, I had like one, like I think it was my, my pinned post or like, or I think it was like my, my pinned post um, that went viral in like December of 2019, which was just on like Zen made, like, you know, overnight success or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And I remember like, that, so that got me. Yeah, that, that got me like a couple people that, that were actually like following me. And then March of last year is when like I kind of hit that point where it's like whenever I posted, I would always get at least a little bit of like a, a genuine engagement from some of the followers. And then only yeah. like in the past couple of months do I actually feel like I, you know, I can pretty much post for help whenever I want and get like genuine, like really high quality feedback from people. So I don't know. I actually just realized that it's very much um, – it's very much like a real life kind of social network or like, or like yeah. in comparison to almost anything else, it's, it's much, it, it, it's much more like kind of walking into a room. And it's like, if you, if you walk into a big party and you know, absolutely no one there, if you say yeah. something, then no yeah. one cares, no one pays attention to you. But if you yeah. walk in and like, you already know half the people or, you know, the host or whatever it might be, then all yeah. of a sudden your experience changes when you like ask for absolutely. help and like, and all of, all of that stuff. And then, yeah, it's exactly like what you said that I feel like Twitter is the place that I can just like genuinely like be myself you know i never post about zen made numbers on facebook you know i have a bunch yeah. of friends and stuff, but yeah. also like family and stuff right like yeah. i never post about like how much money i actually like earn or it's like on twitter you know like that's that's like some of my most like viral tweets i'm just like hey yeah. like you know people appreciate that they actually want to know yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah, how exactly. you did it yeah. yeah and just like pointing out of just like yo like you know it, it's like <laughs> it looks great now like if you follow my twitter you probably think that like you know just like made of money and it's like that that's not true <laughs> and that certainly wasn't true like six months ago or whatever you know yeah so it's um yeah it's it's, it's, it's good I, I like like it a lot so uh, and then it's also nice i mean I, it might be a little bit a little bit different for you because like you're, you're obviously like marketing and like and selling a bit like on there to, to add to that party analogy the another thing is you can actually be a no one and walk into a party. But if you say something interesting that other people want to hear, they'll still come to you. And that's what yeah. that I think that part makes it accessible. Like you can be nobody and you can be valuable and then you'll be somebody. People will know you for that value, which is just amazing. Yeah. It's not like some, like how Clubhouse has made it like this. Uh, I don't know what to call it. Rich Tech Boys Club, something like that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's yeah. not like that. It, there's access to everyone. Yeah. And uh, I love that part about Twitter. But until yeah. until this course, I had not been able to, or rather, I had not tried to monetize my audience. Mm. And this course was like an MVP, like, hey, all this stuff I'm putting out every week, is there going yeah. to be anything out of it? So this told me that there is. So I should there keep is. doing this yeah. for another like six months and then put out something else that people want to really learn about or read yeah. about and then do that again and keep repeating it over a period of time. Yeah, absolutely. But it's, it's, yeah. It's fun though. Yeah, I'm not getting customers out of Twitter either. I mean, we do get, but it's not something I'm going to write an epic article about. Yeah. Like, hey, I became, like, we're doing million AR on through Twitter. No, that's not going to happen. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I know, but it, it, yeah, Twitter's just been, been so amazing because, you know, like you saw, obviously, like I put on my calendar link and, you know, yeah. it's like I, I've had just so many great conversations with like with great people and stuff and like it's, um, yeah, I, I love it. I feel I feel dumb for having not not been on there like or earlier because I feel like <laughs> I've made so many like actually like good friends that actually know what's going on in my life. Whereas I feel like on Facebook, it's like people just see a photo <laughs> of like me in like some place, but they have no idea what I'm actually spending my time doing and like all, all that stuff. So yeah. me too. So where, where do you go from here? Like you've been on this journey for a while, 2013, since 2013, your business is in a really good place, stable uh, and growing year on year, uh, you're living a good lifestyle, the kind of life you want to live. What, where do you go from here? Like this is something where I want to be in a few years, and mm. I'm trying to understand since you're already there, what's the step ahead? What's the road ahead? Yeah. So I mean, I think that's one that I think is obviously going to like going to defer for um, for 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 everyone. Um, for me, I've always been very focused on like the lifestyle. Is like I don't I don't really like working for the sake of um and so for for me 
when when I look forward to like let's say a couple of years from now, I would expect to um, I would expect to probably be more in the investor sort of headspace, or not even necessarily the investor headspace, but more like the owner uh, kind of like headspace. Like I don't think that I actually want to be an investor that's like buying small percentages of other companies, but I do, I do think that I'll buy another software company here. Own and in operate the, um, instead. Own, yeah, own, own and operate. But, but I mean, honestly, like I, I'm sure you've seen like Andrew Wilkinson from Tiny yeah. Capital around and stuff. So more, more like that model, I, I think mm. where um, m- maybe a little bit more hands-on than him. But one thing that I think is interesting is that I, I wouldn't consider myself to be an operator. I would consider myself to be more of like, kind of like the CEO or like the marketer, right? So mm. I don't know about buying a company and then just putting an operator in to do everything, but I would yeah. definitely need like a COO to be managing everything on a day-to-day basis and then maybe me doing strategy and stuff like that. And so, yeah, for, for a while there, I thought that we were going to sell ZenMade. And now more and more, I don't think that we're going that we're going to sell it because initially I was like, oh yeah, I should sell it. And then I have money to go and to invest in other companies and stuff. Yeah. And then the more that I thought about it, that if I'm if I look like 10 years into the future or 20 years into the future, I probably want to own multiple companies. And if I want to own multiple yeah. companies, then like why sell the very first one that's actually <laughs> making like all the money, you know? Right. It's um, doing really well. There's like literally yeah. no reason to part from it. Yeah, exactly. And it's to the point now where just like, you know, it, it's growing. Like I, I still really enjoy waking up every day and working on ZenMade that's and awesome. working with the team and like and all of like all of that stuff. So in in a lot of ways, like the the kind of the challenge that I have, not really like in, in my head per se, but um the the challenge that I'm enjoying going through right now is I'm just enjoying seeing how far I can scale ZenMade while still enjoying everything and without giving up like the lifestyle. So to me, I know there's lots of people that have built companies faster than me and make like mm-hmm. more money than me, but you'd be very hard pressed to find someone that has like the work life balance that I do. That's probably gen like generally as happy with life as I am. But like, I mean, I, yeah. I pretty much wake up and work like maybe two hours a day. And then I spend the rest of my day, like listening to podcasts, listening to books. And like, a lot of them are like high level, like sort of like classics and stuff, or like biographies of like really high level people. It drives my wife up a wall because she works for <laughs> ZenMade and works way more hours every day, like than I do. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it drives her like her mad, but, um, yeah, but I, I really do, do want to see that. And like, for, for me, it's kind of that thing of like, I don't, I don't see all that many people out there that are able to run like a three or a $5 million a year business without completely sacrificing their lives. And like right. if anything, I kind of want to be the guy that just like shows more people out there that like, Hey, this is possible. Like you yep. don't have yep. to do the Gary V thing and work like <laughs> a hundred hours a week to run like a massive, like a massive He needs to buy the jets. <laughs> uh, he does. <laughs> no, I mean, like, don't, don't get me wrong. Like, I love Gary Vee, and I think, I think, oh, yeah, like, same. Ton of the stuff, yeah, t- a ton yeah. of the stuff that he says, I think, makes perfect sense. And I think a lot yeah. of what he says about hustle and grind and all of that is Agreed. completely necessary to get stuff like off the ground. Yeah. Oh, what, yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I'm getting excited. We're talking about Gary V. I'm challenging, <laughs> I'm, I'm We're channeling his energy. Gary v. Yeah. Hi. Hello, Gary V. Energy is being channeled right now. <laughs> yeah. Do it quietly. Do it with one off so you can. Okay. Sorry, love. All right. I'm videos and I can't even hear. Well, you should use your noise canceling headphones. This is that's probably why, what that's... happens to Gary V. at home. <laughs> somebody's like, hey, tone it down, or dad, tone it down. And he's like, yeah. I can't, my energy zone. <laughs> <laughs> I, honestly, I I fed off his energy for like a year when I was also yeah. in that phase where I needed to hustle to get to this point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You're yeah. out of this room tomorrow. You'll be free. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, we uh, we're we're staying in like in a nice nice apartment right now and uh, or a nice like hotel room in 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 Bangkok and uh, the one thing that 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 Fran like the only thing that she cared about when we uh, when we picked out this place that she wanted to make sure there was a bathtub. And as many doors as possible, because she just wanted to put as many doors between like me 
and like her at all <laughs> times that I was like on calls and stuff because I just get excited about oh, stuff. Man. So, um, yeah, yeah. But anyways, yeah. So that's kind of kind of what I'm what I'm like thinking and like yeah. I just just want to keep like keep pushing that and then kind of buy the next thing and install you know like an operator there and then you know kind of like manage things or like market things and 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 all that. Um, and then we'll see, like, I, I don't think it's going to be like this forever, um, that I do get the feeling that at some point here, it's, you know, I'm going to find something that I'm like way more passionate about and actually want to work on, you know, my wife, um, started, uh, get off set.io, um, which is uh, kind of like a subscription model business where, um, where, you know, like 90% of the revenue that she collects just goes directly into, um, to buying trees and helping to reverse climate change. Right. I mean, I get the feeling that I'll be, you know, doing some marketing there and like, and stuff like that, um, or like helping her as much as like, as she, she needs it or, um, or, or wants it and stuff. And so, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll see where, where it all, um, where, where it all goes. But yeah. yeah, for for now, I'm just happy as is, you know, no complaints. I had to change my tomorrow and, you know, that that's where we met. So it's, um, it's where it kind of like feels like home to us and we'll be, we'll be staying there for the next probably four or five years. So, you know. Damn, that, that's going to be fun. I, I'm definitely meeting you there when I uh, <laughs> fly down to Chiang Mai. Yeah, for, for sure. Yeah. How, how about you? I mean, obviously you, you guys are just at like the beginning of the journey. Well, it probably doesn't feel like the beginning of the journey. I feel it probably feels like you've been working on delightful chat for like for, for a while now, but um, yeah, yeah. What, what's kind of the plan with this and everything? So it's similar. Like Sankalp and I decided that, okay, so we know we're going to do this. This is what drives us. And this is where we are able to use all our skills. The ones we already have to the best of our abilities. So then we know we have to build software businesses. And then, so then what should we do? So the question came is like, what should we do that we are ha- we're going to be happy doing 10 years down the line also. And that's where we decided, okay, Delight Chat is a kind of business that we'd be happy doing 10 years down the line also, because we'll get to use our own product. We'll definitely mm-hmm. make benefit other people. Like but mm-hmm. at least this is something we haven't done yet because we don't have actual paying users or something yet. We're just doing a closed beta right now. But the goal is how do we align ourselves to this long-term goal, maybe instead of measuring our MRR growth every month as our number one metric, we'll measure impact increased every month. Like how many people uh, did we enable e-commerce brands to support every month? Because that's like a more useful thing to do. We don't want to yeah. uh, sell $1,000 software or $10,000 software to 100 people. We want to sell $100 software to tens of thousands of people so that more people yeah. can benefit from. That's the whole point of software. Like get it out to more people. And then bring that efficiency gains to everyone and make it affordable yeah. so it's accessible. Uh, yeah. But I also, the other side, like, how, again, like we try to think of the long term and then we try to bring that into actions today so that somewhere yeah. you end, you suddenly end up in that vision. Uh, otherwise, it doesn't happen. Right? Otherwise, just a, it's just mm-hmm. a dream. So we're thinking, okay, so we don't want to be dependent on one thing. We want to build mm-hmm. a suite of uh, companies or businesses. And that's how we're yeah. trying to align ourselves and figure out how does the future look for us. So are we Delight Chat or are we more like Delight Works, which is a suite of apps mm-hmm. for yeah. e-commerce businesses? Because we have decided mm-hmm. we're going to serve e-commerce uh, businesses. Okay. We enjoy working with these people and they see the value in software. Uh, yeah. Like they're not the kind of people who are like, oh, your software is great, but I don't want to pay for it. They're not like that. Uh, so they're good people to work with. And uh, yeah, something like that. So maybe okay. in a few years, the company should be at a point where it's make it's comfortably making a few million in ARR. Uh, people mm. inside the company are happy. Currently, yeah. what we are doing already is almost everybody in the company, actually a few people joined in January. Sorry, half the team joined in January. So we are 10 people now. <laughs> <laughs> so it's a lot of people. But all the people who joined before that, like most of them, uh, like four, five of us, five of us have blogs, six of us have blogs, out of which four yeah. of us are already consistently putting out content. And- nice. uh, one of them already has a few side projects and that gives them joy. So we are actively yeah. encouraging people to do things that make their life better because they're like, you know, work and all will keep going on like company work. You might be working somewhere else a few years down the line. Why are we here to get better as people to learn a lot and also do our own things? Like, cause yeah, like let's face it. We are the, the purpose of the company is to get some like grow, but the purpose yeah. of employees is not to make the company grow. It's to live their life. Like, at the end of the day, right? So you should do the things that make you happy. So trying to promote that from now. So 
if we do this right then in 5 years we should be a multi product company multi million arr okay. so we're not dependent on one thing we have a portfolio of bets as a result we are not competing with one company we have now a bundle of products which we can offer at a superior maybe value or whatever and everybody in the right. company is happy they have their own thing going maybe they have their own blog youtube channel podcast whatever we'll support them in yeah. it and we've told some people like hey so if you're going to start a company in 3 4 years then and if, you, if like our work experience has been great then we are going to be the ones to write the check for you because we want you yeah. to succeed because the more people who do this the better the world gets there should be a thousand a uh, million dollar companies instead of 1 billion dollar company because that's the way wealth mm. inequality will be reduced and that's how more yeah. wealth will be spread so at least that's what we are trying to see with the delight chat uh, journey individually like uh, at least for me and i think for large part sankalp he has his own things also i i think uh, humans are happiest when they are doing creative pursuits i am happiest when i'm writing my blog about anything like i would like like to write about gibberish also sometimes but then i'm like nobody's going to read that shit so maybe i'll just keep it in my drafts for now <laughs> there's a lot of drafts like that <laughs> it's basically gibberish uh, but and like for some people can paint i can't paint for shit i would like to learn how to paint mm. thankfully i know how to design on a canvas or like on a figma but maybe i'll be able to do it on a canvas too soon uh, but writing gives me that joy and for yeah. me there's no bounds to writing i would like to write an epic a space adventure novel which has love hate war kingdoms like break up everything like and the like, interspecies like what religious factions like fighting each other i would want to write a space opera like that for fun because yeah. it's a, that's a creative pursuit i would like to do without the pressure yeah. that this thing has to make any money it just for yeah. joy so yeah. in 5 years from now i would like to be at a point where finances are taken care of uh, the company yeah. is running well Uh, everybody is aligned and everybody is happy this is not a place where you just come and like we feed off you when you go back drain and then yep. we are doing our own like at least individually we are doing our own creative pursuits and living a good life like being happy yep. with life on a day to day basis something right. like similar to how you describe like you're happy every day uh, with what yep. you have and even though that means instead of making uh, say instead of me being a billionaire i'll just be a millionaire it's fine <laughs> <laughs> like who the fuck cares man <laughs> i mean yeah, people yeah. who care i think I, i i mean if i had like 10 billion in my pocket i would probably use 9.9 out of it to figure out how to solve the top 10 problems in the world because mm-hmm. i can't find another re- reason to use that money what else will you do with that money like yeah i mean and increasing that money seems like such a stupid thing to do like what are you going to do increasing 10 billion when you can literally wipe out like 100 big problems in the world and yeah. you know do good like there's no other uh, here's another thing here's, here's another reason yeah. i started tweeting consistently and writing on the blog mm-hmm. uh, apart from just a place for me to like let out my thoughts and put it permanently in as a record so that i can come back to it later uh, i was also like once you reach a certain level in life i can't think of another thing to do but to tell other people how to do it cuz what mm. else is there like i can just hold it for myself like a treasure there was like there's yeah. no joy in that so therefore i wrote a blog called mission 1000 so i would call my life success if i can create 1000 more entrepreneurs who can then mm. go ahead and do that to 1000 more people each yeah. and then you yeah. know trickle down effect from there so yeah, yeah this i don't see any point in doing anything else except you know, doing things of creative pursuit and helping other people get to the same place something like nice. that Nice, nice. Yeah, that's awesome. I think I just awesome. garbled out a lot of stuff right now. Vomited <laughs> <Wow. laughs> <laughs> out. Good. Yeah, no, that's that's awesome. Yeah, that's really that's really cool. So, yeah, that's uh, it's 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 good good stuff, and definitely agree with a lot of those a lot of those points. Um, yeah, I mean, I I can't believe that if you were a billionaire that you'd feel like you know ten million Making dollars was enough. You know, like <laughs> unbelievable. <laughs> I know, right? What do you do with that money? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, so, man. yeah. It's like that. This is like the first year that I'll be like donating a lot more money and be like setting up like you know charity and and all like all that stuff. And I'm I'm looking forward to that. But it's you know it's also one of those things of like I do feel like you've got to take care of yourself first, right? But then there's too many people. It's like they take care of themselves and then they try to enrich themselves at the expense of they others, never stop. You know? taking, yeah, they never yeah. stop. Exactly, right? Because yeah. like for me, it's like I like, you know, I look at money at this point as almost like a, 
or particularly within ZenMade, that because like I'm now financially, like not financially independent yet, you know, like if ZenMade were to disappear tomorrow, I wouldn't be in like in the best situation. But as long as ZenMade's around, like, you know, I'm very like financially comfortable and particularly being in Thailand where I can lower my expenses and, um, and, and stuff. So to me now, like the money is it's more like points in a game you know it, it's more just that like you know i want to see zen made continue to grow because like if it's dying it might mean that we need to um you know if, if it stops growing and starts shrinking then we might just start yeah. laying people off we can't help as many people there's like there's all of um of like of, of that stuff but yeah. I realized that like my happiness doesn't actually like, it's not tied to us making more and more money. And that's why it's yeah. like, I want to see how much money we can make without me having to sacrifice the things that do truly make me happy. And then if we can do that and we can get it from, you know, like we're, we're at like 1.1 or 1.2 million ARR, like right now. And if we can go from that and we can get it to 5 million or to 10 million ARR, yeah. then it's like that money opens up so many other possibilities. And that's not cool. like, you know, I'm not going to cool flying on private jets but <laughs> yeah right. having 10 million dollars that's a lot of money to make a difference in the world like what you were saying yep. you know like solving yep. like big problems and stuff like that so i don't know we'll we'll see how it all goes we, we we'll have another conversation yep. like this one and in, in five years and see where we're at <laughs> absolutely i i love the analogy about points and just like there's no, uh, points are used to redeem against things uh, mm. but the collection of points itself is not the goal it's to yeah. find enough points to do something with it. I guess that's what money is. It's a means to an end. Mm -hmm. But the moment yeah. money becomes your end, you're fucked. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Basically. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's like they, they say like money, money can't buy happiness, but money can buy the things that make you happy. Right. <laughs> yeah. and like, there's yes. obviously some like exceptions, but you yes. know, and it's like, once you get to that point, you know, I was like, for me, like, I feel like I'm a pretty simple, like simple guy. Like, I just want to go to Chiang Mai and just like do jujitsu <laughs> and like take my wife on dates and like, you know, like do push ups every day, I guess. Yeah. Like, I don't really have like, and like much more aspiration that I want to listen to my books and like, you know, I'm very ADD. I don't like writing long form stuff. So I like being on Twitter and I like just like sharing that's, my thoughts and occasionally that's amazing. people and like, yeah, like, you know, like what, what more does there have to be? And like, of course, that'll change over time. But for now, yep. it's like, you know, I don't need any more money. Like, um, yeah. yeah, I don't know. It's, it's a very freeing thought. It's not something I thought that I'd be saying like, you know, 12 or 18 months ago, you know, it's like <laughs> just when money was everything. So Yeah, yeah. I, I'm so glad to hear that. And like that you've come to this point in your journey and that when you say this to other people and then you might help some other people also mm -hmm. aspire to and reach this part of this, reach this stage in their journey. Yeah, tiny way to make the world a little bit better. Yeah, yeah, for sure. So... All right, I gotta, I gotta get going. My CTO just, just messaged me. I think I gotta jump on a, on a quick call with him. Um, All right. Yeah, but dude, let, let's do this again sometime soon. This is a really fun, uh, fun conversation. Absolutely. And um, if you're, if you're down, um, I can message you about this like afterwards. We've got like a video editor for, um, for, for, for ZenMade that we, we might even publish this like on, on YouTube if you're, if you're okay with it. We can edit out anything. Absolutely. If there's something you don't want to share, that, that'd be cool. Yeah. Okay. That's I don't perfectly usually, cool. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah, I don't, I don't actually usually ask, like, it, it always records automatically, because it's like my, my work, like, Zoom, but then occasionally, yeah. I'll be like, oh, we had a really good conversation, and I send it to my team and go, hey, can you take some yeah. notes on this? But, like, yeah. this one, I think, actually, people would probably want to tune into and just watch True. straight through, 